Okay, we're here today with Susan Michelle, the techie mentor and a very good VA friend of mine, although she doesn't do VA work, but she does coaching. And she's here today to talk to, talk to us about uh, packaging, a question that has been asked so many times in this group, the independent VA group, what is packaging? How do I do it? How do I raise my weight? Just over and over and over, people ask the same questions. So I thought of a good idea to invite Susan, since she's actually designed a program about packaging your services, and she knows a lot about it. I've taken the her program, so I can personally vouch for the training that she provides. So I just wanted to have her here. People can see the uh, video and hopefully we'll answer questions that they have. And um, we will move on to something else and we'll always be asking the same questions about, <laughs> about pricing, et cetera. So with that being said, hey, Susan. Hey, Sharon. Thank you for allowing me to do this. I appreciate the opportunity. And I would just add to Sharon's introduction, I'm really more of a trainer, not a coach, um, because I really don't do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, doesn't mean I don't, but I really look at myself a trainer first, a coach second, okay? Okay. Um, and so packaging has is, is been a hot topic for years, and it can be uh, uh, confusing, overwhelming, cumbersome. Um, the problem that I see is that different people have different definitions, um, which drives me crazy because I come from a background where everything is standardized, right? Definitions are definitions. Like I'm IT, right? Now I know what a definition of something is. So I'm going to tell you my definitions. So packages are not ours. Packages is never time. Okay, so if you say you have packages and you're selling your time, that's not a package, that's a retainer, right? So packages right are there. not ours. Stop okay. right there. Repeat that, please. Okay. One more time. One more time. <laughs> packages are not ours. Okay, it's not time. You're not selling your time when you're doing a package. Now, there's a lot of people that will tell you that's a package. It's not a package. No, that's a retainer, right? You're selling time. You're not so, selling expertise. So what is a package? Okay, so a package is a package of expertise. So every package is a specific expertise. So for instance, say that I write copy, but I also develop websites. Okay, I do both. That's two different expertise, even though they intertwine, right? Because if you build a website, somebody's got to write the copy, right? So I would actually have two packages that I could put together. One is copy, one is WordPress. Okay, so and you you price them for that expertise. Yes. Knowing how to pack, how yes. to develop websites is one pricing, and right. copywriting is a separate pricing. Right. So okay. it's, your packages are expertise based. So is your pricing. Now that doesn't mean you can't create a custom package with everything all together. Now that's that's fine, but just for packaging 101. Packages are um, not ours. They are expertise based and they are, um, let me just say they're fixed. And what I mean by that is you determine what is delivered in each package and you price it. Okay. So a common, another common issue is that people will confuse a project with a package. They're not the same thing. Now they could be overlapping, but they're not the same thing. A package, you define what's called the scope. You define what's being delivered. Okay? You say you're getting this, 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 and this for this much money. Okay? A project, the client defines the scope. You then give them a proposal for getting the work done. Okay. okay. That, that makes sense. So do me a favor and <laughs> repeat it again. I want okay. everyone to be clear on yes. these definitions. Yes. So a package you set the what's called the deliverables. What are you delivering in the package? Well, I'm going to give you a six-page WordPress website using the Divi theme with these five recommended plugins. I mean, you're very specific. Okay, that's a package. Deliverables, price. You get this for this. Okay, it's like an off-the-shelf, right? A project is the scope or what's being created or delivered is defined by the client. 
you then would talk to the client you would then present them a proposal based on what you are doing for them okay one you control the other the client controls so <clears throat> with that concept I have packages on my website uh -huh. the client sees the package and says yes I want that mm -hmm. versus the client saying I need this 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 and this right. give me a price for doing right. that you right. set the price you set you set you set the package you set what are you doing how many of each for what price right so do a lot of people now a lot of virtual assistants do they use packages do they use retainers or do they just do hourly and how can you decide which is the best for your individual business okay good question so when you're starting out I always recommend that people start out hourly because you don't know how long things take you're probably new to the business you might be new to a um, an expertise like MailChimp or you know uh, Infusionsoft or WordPress or whatever it might be you can't package what you don't know you can't because first of all you have no idea what goes into it and second of all you don't know how long it takes those are the core ingredients of a package okay so with that um, if you start out hourly you're going to use your task management system to kind of break down the tasks that you're doing and then how long that takes okay so you can charge hourly. now I would never be somebody who would charge um, after the work is done I recommend you do retainers and you get paid up front because the last thing you want to do is do a bunch of work and then have to chase somebody to pay you okay, okay. so I was not one well when I started I didn't know that so I, I um, you know would invoice after and then it would take forever to get paid it which may not be a big deal <laughs> right so I, I moved to retainer so a retainer is a bucket of prepaid hours and the client controls how those hours are used okay so say they buy five hours from you and then they tell you what you do so you start to develop an idea of what you want all the time and that can kind of drive you to packages so when you're starting out, I always recommend you start it hourly, but that means with retainers, not invoicing after. And then tracking what you're doing so you can look at that information and then use that to create a package. Now, how do you know when you want to go to packages? Well, you run out of time to sell and you're not making enough money, right? You, I mean, you only have so much time you can sell. So you have some options at that point. You can raise your rates, um, which good, fine. Uh, but if you're like me, you know, I hate that timer, right? I forget to turn it on. I forget to turn it off. <laughs> but then I adjust and then I, I, and then I end up losing money because I'm afraid I might overcharge. Um, no, you know, I did all that. Um, so when you want to go to packages, it, it's usually one of two things. You want to make more money and, or you've run out of time to sell. Well, right? what happens, what happens when you have a client um, and you've done hourly with them or retainer with them for a long time or even a short period of time mm -hmm. and you think you're ready to transition to packages how do you indoctrinate that client that using packages is better than retainer or hourly well okay so let's in all honesty you'll, you'll lose clients when you go from one to the other you're, you're going to Right, because there are there are people who want to micromanage you, and those are the people that love to look at your hours and what you're doing and where you're doing it, and then saying, "Hey, why did it take you so long to do that?" <laughs> Even though they may not know what it is, right? To me, those and they're not bad people; they're just micromanagers. It's a control thing, right? Those people, you'll have a heck of a time moving to a package because the control's gone, right? they can't look at the hours they can't question because there's no time tracking at all on a package okay so the those type of clients are in one kind of category the second category are the clients that you know they're tired of having you know one month you run out of hours you know the next month you don't use all your hours it's a very inconsistent thing for them and sometimes you go over your hours and then you know they're like wow i wasn't really prepared to pay that you know what i mean 
and they may not understand how long it takes to build a website or implement a, a campaign in you know MailChimp or Infusionsoft because they don't know what they don't know. So when you go to packaging, those types of people like the fact they know what they're getting for how much there's no surprises, black and white, right? They know that this is what I'm getting at the end of the day and this is how much I'm gonna pay, not more, not less. There's no, you know, there's no extra bill that comes at the end of the month. So um, then for those individuals, those BAs who are in that situation, do you recommend that they have an hourly program or a people retainer and start packages for the new clients that they take on yeah. or just say hands up this is my way you like it or you don't like it i'm transitioning to packages. Right. so there there's no right or wrong answer right your business your choice you choose you can keep your clients happy <laughs> and and then pull the new ones in on packages or if you're like me i'm like i'm done i'm done tracking time i'm moving this way either come or go and if you want to go fine i'll help you find somebody who's suited for you right i'm not just going to drop you like a hot potato right but for me you know it, it was just it, it it was icky right my, my my business became icky like a job because i was time tracking and all this other and that's not what i wanted so it comes down to what do you want to do Either way is fine. You just make the, the determination of what works best for you. Okay, then we've talked about using or creating packages for the standard duties, creating a website, social media. But what about if you are a general generalist VA and you do emails, you manage the calendar, or you do billing or um, you know administrative type things how do you put those duties into packages and you can here's the secret you quantify everything and you slap a duration or a timeline on it okay so what do i mean by that okay um quantify numbers Okay, so let's take the email, for example. Okay, so the email has two pieces. It has a duration, which is time, and it has a number. I will answer up to 100 emails every week. There's package for X number about for this much, right? Because what the perception is is that you have to get away from thinking of selling your time. You are selling, it, you're delivering in time. You're selling expertise, okay? Everything's delivered in time because that's how we work, but you're not selling your time, you're selling your expertise. So it's always a, a quantify it, and if it's ongoing work, then it's got to have a duration. So I will do four easings, up to four easings per month for $300. And that's just a number, I'm throwing out a number, okay? Um, I will answer up to 50 emails per day. I will schedule up to 10 appointments and I will, whatever, I don't know, whatever the other thing is that you wanna do, but you could put those into one package and you could call that your, your admin gold package, right? Okay. But you quantify and you put a duration, okay? How long and how many? Now, if it's something like uh, a one and done, like a website, if I did a website package, excuse me, I would tell them you're getting this many of this, but it's not monthly or daily or weekly or yearly, it's one and done, right? You'll get this website by this date. So that's your timeline or your deadline. Okay. So quantify it and then put a duration on it. So for a new BA coming into the industry who know absolutely nothing mm -hmm. about our, they've heard about hourly rates, They've even heard the term retainer, but they're not sure how to make the decision to go that way. Right. What should they do to determine which way to start off? Because they don't they don't know anything about packaging and right. determining the hours and how long it takes. A lot of them don't even know what to charge. Right. So I'm brand new. What do, what do I do so that I can not have the headache later of maybe losing customers because I didn't start off with packages. 
Well, see, and you can't package what you don't know. So if you already are a MailChimp person or you've already done social media, you have those skill sets coming in and you know what that is, then you could package that out the gate. But most VAs, because they don't have the skill sets that are needed in this industry, they have to learn it first and then offer it, right? You can't offer, you can't package what you don't know, right? Because someone's losing money, either you or the client, because you're guessing. So then, I know you said you are a trainer. What do you do relative to training someone to transition or, you know, develop a package? I, what, what's that process? Well, okay. So first off, we look at what are, their, what are the skills, what are services that they're offering, okay? Are they doing administrative work? Are they doing more technical work? Are they doing consulting? Because there's all different kinds. Right, because the VA industry is very diverse. Everybody's got different um, backgrounds. So the first thing is, is what, what are you offering as a service? Is it a service that's known or is it a service that's new? Right, that you're learning and putting together. Um, doesn't matter what it is, you have to have a task management system because you need a way to track the time and the task, right? Because you have to know what tasks make up building a website. You have to know what tasks are involved in answering email right because maybe certain emails get certain responses right they're canned responses you have to know what to do when so you have to have a way to track the system of what you do day in day okay and that right there is gonna st and, and so if you already know what you do then you can easily go in your task management system and create uh you know here's the things i do to deliver this package okay if you don't then you need to start putting the task in by type of expertise. So let's say I have a MailChimp bucket and I have an Infusionsoft bucket. And then I would just say, okay, here's what I'm doing in Infusionsoft, here's what I'm doing in MailChimp. And I would track those and I would track my time because it's still time delivered. You have to know how long it takes you to deliver it, even though you're not selling time, okay? So that's the approach I would take. You know, there's more to it than that because you have to look at you know, strategically how do packages fit in your business because they may not fit yet because you don't have the knowledge to package right? Or maybe you're going to do packages and hourly, which is fine. Remember, it's your business, your choice. You can do it however you want to. So um, several things. It comes down to, to what type of business do they want? You know, do they want to do just do packages? Do they want to do hourly? Do they want to do a combination, right? And the best advice I could give is if you have experience that you can package, package it off the board immediately. Okay? If, like me, I had to learn, um, I had to start with hourly, because I didn't know any better anyways, and then move to packages over time. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And I guess my next question would be, <clears throat> I know there's more steps <laughs> to develop the package. Uh -huh. And you, again, I'm talking from the perspective of a person who has not done this before. Right. Do you recommend that they time themselves or during certain tasks mm -hmm. so they can figure out yes. how long it actually takes versus when they were doing hourly, they said, okay, I make, I'm going to charge you $30 an hour, right. when it may take two hours. It may take five hours, but you right. only charge them for one or two hours. So how do you determine, number one, how do you determine what to charge for? I know you said step by step, but do you list every minute step that you no. do in the process and then put that on the website? No. Do general, a general list. Right. So that the client doesn't get confused and overwhelmed. So less is more. Simple is what we're aiming for. So I would say this. Um, first of all, I would say 90% of VA is under charge. Okay. Um, and it's a complete different, it's, it's a different perception when you go to package. You do not take your hourly rate times how long it takes to get it done. That is not your package rate. You're still making less money, <laughs> right? So how do you determine what your package okay. rate is? So you have to first, what's your baseline? How much money do you have to make? Everybody has to start at that number and everybody's different, right? 
So you have to know what is your baseline number that you have to bring in every day, every month, whatever it is, every week to pay your bills. Okay, and then you should have a second number. How much do you want to make? And they should be very different, right? This is where I'm at today, but this is where I want to go, right? So that's your baseline number. And first of all, pricing is a science and an art. There is no rubber stamp that says you have to charge $35 an hour for this or $45 for that or $50 for that. My best analogy is this. There are business coaches that charge $100 an hour. There are business coaches that charge $50,000 an hour and they both have clients, okay? You have to decide where are you gonna sit in the market? Are you gonna be economy, middle class, or luxury, like cars, right? There's <laughs> economy cars, right? Middle of the road, and then there's those luxury cars. There's nothing wrong with any of them. You can make tons of money in economy, you can make tons of money in the middle, or you can make a ton of money at the top. So when it comes to pricing, you have to start with your baseline, whatever that number is, and then how much do you wanna make? Most of us aren't making enough when we start out, right? So please do not make the mistake, and I know there are other people who teach this, it's incorrect. That's because all you're doing is multiplying what you're, what you're charging today, hourly, to deliver a package. No, you're not selling time, you're selling expertise. You've got to change your mindset. It's like going from an admin to a consultant, right? Consultants make more money. But also, the expectation of value is higher from a consultant than it is an admin. Even though they could be the same expertise, they're going to think the admin charges less than the consultant. Okay? So, pricing plays with your mind. Right? <laughs> it plays with your mind. And if you have a worth issue, you have money issues, it's only going to compound it. So, I can't tell you what to charge. You have to know your baseline number. And here's, here is my best example, is you have to at least increase it by a third, if not a half. Then, then you can say, okay, well it takes me this long, that'll give you a better idea, because you still need to ca calculate how long it takes, right? But it's not based on what you're charging per hour, it's based on how that expertise is viewed in the marketplace. Another example would be, you know, MailChimp isn't as difficult as Infusionsoft. Okay, Infusionsoft packages are more expensive than MailChimp because Infusionsoft has a lot more bells and whistles to it, right? So you have to look at the expertise as well, okay? So I know that's probably not the answer you wanted, but that's how you have to approach this. Okay, so I'm not looking for a particular answer. I just right. want people to understand and don't be feel like it's complicated or, um, oh my God, I can't do this. I'm just right. gonna stick to the old way. Right. Because we want people to make money. We want them to, to share their expertise. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they may need some more training to get to whatever level they wanna be at, <clears throat> but at least the concept is there. Right. That they can do it, starting from where the point they're at now. They don't have to wait five years. Right. Transition into doing packages. So I think that's a relevant point. And I think the other relevant point you made <laughs> was dealing with the money mindset. <laughs> because a lot of people don't value the skills that they have. Right. Or they value them at a lower level right. than what they should. Because they just want to jump into the industry. And they're right. not thinking about their future or even undercharging. So, right. you know, that money mindset, I think, is really an important point, and I'm glad that you brought it up. <clears throat> so, I know we're not going through the whole process because mm -hmm. one of my purposes of asking you was for you to tell me about your. Um, designing lucrative packages program. <clears throat> Not necessarily that I want everybody to enroll, but I want <laughs> them to know that your resource is there for when they're ready, they can come to you, take up your program, and do it the right way versus right. what everybody else is telling them that isn't really working. I know you know what you're talking about, so I want them to know and experience just some of the knowledge you can give them. Okay, 
Well, I appreciate that. So, yeah, um, the easiest way would be to go to my website, thetechiementer.com, and um, go under the store. Now, depending on when you listen to this, <laughs> I'm going to put a caveat in here. The store may not be there anymore. It might say courses instead because I'm revamping my website. So right now it's a store. You might come back a couple months ago. Wait a minute, there's no store. Courses. Okay, it'll be listed in there, and it will be listed in in kind of the the roadmap phase that I'm rolling out. Okay, so it'll be under the skills portion. Okay, and what I'll invite to do, and, and I'll we can get offline here, um, Sharon, is is I will give you guys a coupon to say five percent if you okay. decide you want to sign up, and then I'll get with you, and we could just we can give them a code. You can put it with the with the recording, and then I'll just put that on the course, and you type that in, and you'll save some money. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that's very generous of you because you're already giving your time. So, and you know, that's super generous to to offer them that a reduced oh. price too. <laughs> and I encourage as many people as possible who are listening to this to take up on this offer and invite your associate VAs because. When the industry does better, everybody does better, right. and you'll do better. Right. And get larger, you know, be able to charge what you're worth, and that is very important to me. Yes. <laughs> so, you've answered the list of questions I had. So, <laughs> is there any information, additional information, yeah. you think you would like to share with everybody? Um, just a couple of things. Um, you. Do not use the same agreement that you use for hourly work for packages. You get yourself in a world of hurt. Legal binding contract. Make sure that you have one that's specific to the package that you're selling. Never work without a signed contract ever. With packages, you have the choice to get paid all up front or 50-50, 50 at the beginning, 50 at the end. Your business, your choice, you choose how you want to do that. Um, and I do recommend that when, even when you do packages, that you still update your clients on the process, right? Well, here's where we're at this month, especially if you're building a website, for instance. Now, they may not see everything that's happening, and they're getting a little nervous. You want to make sure that they understand that it's being done. Now, obviously, if it's a recurring thing you do every month, they're going to know you're doing it because they see the results. Um, so that would be very important, the agreement. Then the other thing, I think, um, is when it comes to packaging, remember, it's not your hourly rate times how long it takes. That's not how you price, because you're not, you're not doing hourly, you're doing expertise, different thing, right? So think of yourself as a consultant, that'll give yourself a raise. You know, <laughs> if you're gonna do that, then I would recommend, you know, to a third to a half, right? Up your rate, up your base rate, and then continue to move it up, right? And if you feel, that you can't do that, then you need to work on your money mindset. You have to feel you're worth the money because nobody else will buy it from you if you don't. If you don't feel like it's worth it, they're not going to feel it's worth it. Well, let me ask you a question right at that point. As part of your training, do you work with the student on developing that money mindset, which will help VA stop asking on these lists and these groups? What do you charge, or how do I come up with my rates? Yes, yes, that's part of the packaging. There is an entire section I think I did on money mindset and money traps. I recommended some money books. You know, I had all kinds of garbage when it came to money, and I never knew I had it until I started my business. And, I would, and, and if you have money issues, you're going to bump up against it all the time. All, and you're never going to make the money that you want because you have these limiting beliefs about your worth or how much you should charge. Or So always go back to the $100 an hour business coach, $50,000 an hour business coach. They both are busy. Okay? So remember, it's, it, you know, you can charge what you're worth. Um, now, obviously, you know, you can't charge $300 an hour to do data entry. <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, it has to be within, you know, what that skill set is viewed at. But you can make really good money, but you have to make sure that you, you charge yourself. So please don't ask people, how much do I charge ever? Because nobody can answer that question for you. You have, you have to know what your baseline is, right? And let me just throw this out. If you visit my YouTube channel, I actually have an entire YouTube series on pricing, okay? It's four videos, right? Free, go watch it. It actually shows you how to use my rate calculation sheet. 
don't ask somebody because you have to have your own baseline number. I have no idea how much Sharon needs to make, right? I don't know what her bills are. And without sharing that type of information, nobody can tell you what to charge for whatever service, right? And I know that's, you know, you don't know what you don't know, so you have to go somewhere to ask. And so that's what I would say. Make sure that you understand that everybody has a different number they have to build off of. And that's the baseline rate to keep the lights on. So your YouTube channel, which is under Susan was shown? Or oh, it's under the, the Techie tech Minter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to Yeah, clarify. and if you go to my website, I have a button. Pop that button, it'll take you right to it. And then it, there's a couple of playlists there. It, there's one specific, there's one for packaging, and there's also one for pricing. Well, then I encourage everybody to go to your website, check it out, uh, you know, watch those videos, and then for more in-depth education and training, check out Susan's program. And, uh, you know, take it, like I said, I enrolled in it. I've taken it, and that's why I feel comfortable in recommending it to all the other VAs who are asking all these questions. <laughs> and quite frankly, wearing me out. <laughs> so I thought this would be a great way to stop all those questions. I mean, ask anything you want, but right. there, there is someone here who has the knowledge and experience that can answer that question for you and help you move to the next level of your business. So Susan, this has been very interesting. I've run out of questions and I'm known for asking tons of questions. I want to thank you You're welcome. for joining us here today on Let's Talk About It. I'm not sure what our next session is going to be about it, but I ask everybody to tune in to the next session. This recording will be made available. Um, within the next day or two for everybody to view. So Susan, thank you very much. Susan Michonne, The Techie Mentor. Please check her out at thetechiementor.com. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.